Okay, for this final video then, in this series, I thought I'd look at some of the scenes that I've not covered yet and show you how to save content in various libraries that you've got so you can reuse it in other scenes. So I'll start with the sky uh, because that comes with a warning. So if you've got a HDRI image in the sky, and even though this is a low resolution one, it will take a lot more memory up compared to other skies in your library. So it's probably better to make your own category because if you exceed a certain size, which is about two gigabytes, then the library will become corrupt and you won't be able to access anything that's saved in it. So if we go into this arrow here, that will allow us to enter the library for sky and fog. Uh, the little H in the corner here, this question crops up often, it means that there's a HDRI image associated with that sky. Using this plus sign here, we can add a new category. So we'll call this uh, video tutorial, cat, uh, I can't spell category, oh, cat, will do. Okay, right. And then I can just add that. And that's added the sky in there. Now, it's also possible to add more folders but you'd want to do that by looking at Horro's uh, PDF about uh, content and that'll show you where to find these folders and uh, and how to go about creating more and then you can find also where your categories are in those folders and that will allow you to check the size of that category so you can make sure you don't make it too big so that saved the sky along with all its settings with the HDRI image and so you can come back and if you've got a scene loaded you can load in that sky and use that sky instead and then with the knowledge that you've gleaned in the other videos you'll know how to go about modifying that sky so that's fairly straightforward except with that one proviso make sure you don't save too many HDRI skies, uh, skies with HDRIs embedded in them, in the same category, otherwise you'll exceed the memory limit for that category. Right, what else have we got in this uh, in this scene? Well, you've got these trees and this island. This island's actually a mesh that I made in Wings 3D, so I'll get hold of this island mesh. What could we do with that? We could add it to the Create Library. Again, you've got this option of adding more folders or adding more categories, so we'll add another category. I'll just call it cat because it's going to be quicker and then I can add the island mesh and if you want to have a different view even though it's already added I think we can save that and so if you didn't like that view you can modify it here with your mouse and holding the uh, left mouse button down and then when you found a view you like the look of I think is it uh, control and alt to transfer it and no, that's to reset it one of these transfers it to this I'm just trying to remember which uh, which combination of keys does it. That's it. It's Shift plus Control and then click on the thumbnail and it'll update it to whatever you've got in this left-hand one, which is a handy thing to know because sometimes what you get here initially when you save it is not very useful and doesn't show you what it is. Like we've got, it could be an underside view like that, which is unhelpful. But if you uh, if you get the opportunity to reposition it, then uh, Shift plus Control, click on the thumbnail and it'll update it to what you have there. So that's saved the uh, saved that mesh to the library. We've got a few things in this scene, I suppose I should point out. The, the tree trunks, um, I, I don't know whether I had to make them invisible or just cut them away. I think I made them invisible because they were appearing outside the island. Let's just look into this now. I know this is digressing slightly. Well, you've got materials in the tree. So here I used an altitude uh, filtering and transparency. And I think I used, uh, did I use quantization on this final step? So it, there's no tr transition zone. And that was covered in another video, actually, so it's a good job I did that. So it cuts the trunk out in this, so that's, if I wanted to save this material for any reason, then I've got my material categories, and I can add another category here, so I'll call this one cat, and then I can add that in. Uh, unlikely to exceed the limits in the materials, unless you add a huge number into one category. Uh, these HDRIs are the, the greatest problem. If I wanted to change, uh, to save this texture, I know it's not a very interesting one, just sh hold shift down, click on the name, opens the texture category selections and I can add a category here it's got this one cat uh, so amazingly I've not managed to duplicate the name and I could add that one in there though it's a bit difficult to see what I've got there I can click on the name if I select it I can click on the name and then I can modify the name so put uh, something and then I can add a bit of a I think I've spelled that right. This is Camtasia messing me about, it's, it's nothing to do with Bryce. Um, that's the trunk material there, and here I've got the leaf material. You'll see that it's transparent, and I suppose I should point out, well, we've covered the saving that, that the 
combining transparency with HDRI lighting is a really bad idea but what I've done is I've named the trees all the same trees and I've excluded them using the influence control here in the image based lighting tab so I've excluded all the trees I've excluded the water and I've excluded the ground so that uh, fewer things are lit by the HDRI lighting only the significant things because the the shadows are strong enough from the predominant light source to get away with that but that, that's a digression okay and they've got island here material likewise you can just save it in your uh, category if you can fish out where you've put it there you go and add it in and likewise you can save you can change the view here if you don't like it to actual selection for example and then hold shift and control and you can update the preview in these libraries it works in a very similar way what other scenes have we got that we can steal so from I might steal this water surface actually so I'll just uh, add that to my library there and then and then when it comes to other scenes you can bring these back in and if you save a material you've automatically got the texture components in it but if you've saved the texture components as well it can save you time when it comes to synthesizing another material oh I know what I've got um, this scene for example these islands that look like pillars they're trees so um, Horrors made an excellent video about all aspects of saving and exporting trees but by and large, I think the, s the safest bet with saving trees is to save them to the object library uh, rather than uh, than using the exporting the. I think there's a BTO file, so I've, I've never really done anything about that. But Horace's got a video; it's on my YouTube channel. Uh, it's, it's if you want to know more about saving the components of trees, so uh, but but I'd use the object library just to be safe. And what else we got? Oh no, I was going to mention something about this as well. So in this scene. I've built this up from uh, a lattice and some rocks that are random replicated but the field of view is so large I've got the side view here that um, that I've had to lean the trees over to just to make them look upright uh, the skies I've created a bit of a, a halo effect around the stars again there's other videos that show you that or you'll be able to see from the settings used in here and the combination of adding the HDRI to the sky and the atmospherics. Look how high the colour perspectives are. Th I'm digressing. You can just add these to the library. You can add the skies to the library from here or I suppose uh, you could add them from here. Uh, where, where do we put that category now? It will appear in alphabetical order. But what did I call it? Um, video tutorial category. There you go. Right, so there's there's a couple of skies in there. I noticed that this has also got a filter in front and since the filter is just an ordinary material we've got the option of adding that to our material category there or we could save the texture. This is a picture texture now so that will occupy a little bit more space probably so hold the shift key down. Ah, I can't do it with that. So okay that's an important difference because it's a picture texture I can't hold the shift key down and enter the library I've got to go into the texture source editor and I think I can copy that but I don't know that I've got anywhere to save it because there's no proper library so that's something to be aware of and you can see how often I use picture textures because I didn't even really think that that would be a problem so probably best to save that to the material library then you can recover that component but I don't think there's any way to save that texture component there as you can do with the procedurally generated ones um, I think I've used a material actually if I go back to the library one uh, not the library one what am I saying I go back to this one that has showed you first. I think I've used a um, texture in there that's a picture. Yes this is a um, there's a spherical map. I think I probably just use a spherical map to generate that from um, a cube but at, at, as, a, as a component if I hold the shift key down and click on the name I can't I can't save it to the library like I can this one which is a procedural texture and so I'll just I'll just pop that in the category. So oh no I've done this before haven't I in another video so I've I think I called this one cat. The thing is, when you've built up these libraries, they're a great resource to come back to. When when you're making more scenes, you can quickly pull things out and change them. So we've got this uh, sunburst effect here, and I can add that just to select on the filter. Now, since these are filters, I suppose one final point, since these are filters and so applied to a 2D object, I could just save the object itself, and that would also have the material incorporated with it so if I add that there 
that's that saved the material with the object so we've got the object the material and then the texture component that's embedded in the material so if you save the object you save the whole lot if you change the texture component which is kind of more convenient when you're building materials up then you can pull those out of the library quite quickly so there you go a bit of a rambling rundown of just a few of the files that are available and how to save your content from these files so you can reuse it in other scenes which is what I encourage you to do and uh, and then you can you can learn from the little bits of content that you've picked up bit by bit which is how I learned how to use the deep text editor or the material settings I just looked at other materials saw what was there saved them used them in my own scenes and gradually adapted them to what I needed oh you might notice uh, by the by that this line looks rather straight and this is because this is a specular response from this material it looks bumpy but it's not really bumpy and uh, the, the specular response can only alter in terms of brightness it can't respond because there is no there, there is no actual modification in the geometry there if we had parallax mapping that, well, that might be might be a possibility but in this case if you wanted to make it look like it was m more on really really 3d water surface you want to swap the foreground area here for a terrain that was using this same material to create its height map there's another video for that you can use the deep text editor to well actually I'll show you since we're saving materials to catch because I'll just show you like if you use this material here in the in the texture component we've got height map output from this from one of the channels so say the alpha channel will give us a height map uh, so if we get that texture and I'll add it to this uh, texture category so I find category in here there we go and add it as the last thing so there's a texture component there then what I could do is go to the create a terrain here and I'll just uh, I'll just edit this terrain go into not into picture it is sort of in picture but it's not in picture you have to hold a button down when you do it and it's the shift button that's it and at that point oh it's remembered the last thing I looked at but if I wanted to get one out of the library I could click on here and select it from the library only the alpha output is used and you can see the scaling wouldn't match the what we've got in the scene because this is going to be the height map so we could steal this height map and use it for a height map for a terrain which we could then put a water material on so we've gone from bump geometry to real geometry which is quite nice and we've used the libraries to, to pull that information out uh, it's quite an involved process setting this up you'd want to set it to solid but I'll just uh, I'll just give you a quick guide there um, when you use uh, the deep tage editor to generate a height map it will slow the going in and out of the terrain editor quite a lot so once you're happy with your height map if you use control C and then create yourself another train I'll hold the control key down and uh, that'll bring it in the default gray and then edit this new terrain instead of going into the, tr the deep change editor there make sure that you've got the same resolution as you had before and use control V and that'll bring that height map in but it'll just be an image this time which means you can modify it by painting over it whereas the other one is being generated by procedural and in this case if you try and edit it and paint over it it won't stick when you go back in it'll have lost that information because it's being generated from this procedural so that will take precedence and it regenerates every time you go back into the lab but if you find you've got your height map so we go back to this one here edit this and then we can paint this one so we can make modifications to it whatever we fancy and then we'd edit again because it's just a picture those modifications will stick so if we wanted to get back to where I was going uh, to Put a, put a height map in here based on this uh, the material texture component that was generating the bump effect that would be the way to go about it so anyway a little bit of a digression there though I thought that was kind of interesting so that's the end of all the videos on this particular series of Bryce Landscape which are all based around content that comes from the Island 2 product that Horo and I have been working on for the last few weeks and which will hopefully be in your hands at some point so there you go, that's the end of the tutorial of the video. I hope you found it useful and interesting and you will use these techniques in your own scenes. Okay, quickly, and just for the look of the thing, since I've done most of the work anyway, I've set this scene up with the terrain at the water surface. A couple of things to remember is to make sure if you do this that you need to exclude 
the new terrain water surface from the HDRI as well as the other things that need excluding because the, the less things you light the faster your render is going to be and also I've increased the bump height on the water material there that's in the background so I doubled that enter that figure manually you can't do it with the slider uh, and the terrain itself has got the material at half bump height because obviously some of the bumpiness of this is uh, generated through the material channel and some is generated from the terrain's geometry itself. So there you go, I just thought out of interest you might like to see what that scene would look like. Okay, that's the end.